Hello, this is Heather Baker with the Pictures Everywhere Proof of Concept video. Pictures Everywhere is much more than a standard Android gallery replacement. As Sebastian Gross asked for in 2015, there is a map that shows all of the pictures that are taken on the device that have geotagged information as map pins with previews that can be clicked to display the photo full screen. The map is also able to be searched. However, the map zoom to the selected place will be implemented in an upcoming spring. There is also a unique calendar view that separates the photos on the device by the day they were taken allowing the user to go back in time as was requested on Reddit in October of 2017. New photos can be captured directly through the Pictures Everywhere application, which saves it to the media store, allowing other device applications to access those photos, and immediately opens it in the individual photo view, allowing the photo to quickly be shared or edited, all within one smooth process. While the photos are displayed at the correct orientation, using EXIF data in the gallery activities. In the single photo activity, if a photo is not within portrait mode, it will be displayed as it is, allowing the user to make effects on the actual photo. There are 18 effects to choose from, including rotation, flip, brightening, and many fun color effects, allowing the user to be able to find an effect that suits the current photo. Since 90% of college-age adults share photos on social media, it is very important to a gallery application to make the effects and sharing process as streamlined as possible with as few motions from the user as can be done. Multiple effects can also be added to your photo at the same time, as long as they are added before the save button is pressed. However, the user can of course go back and add more effects if desired. This allows the user to perfect the photo all in one session. Once the user has created the perfect photo and they're ready to share, they can share the photo as simple as a few clicks to any of their favorite social media applications. Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, they can send or share on Facebook, as well as send the photo through MMS or email.
The MMS option will share to whatever is set as the default messaging application, allowing users that have chosen to download a new application for their MMS to share directly through that platform. The share to folder popover will be populated by information from the database. So as of now, this is a temporary data set used to show how the application will appear. Pictures Everywhere subscriptions allow users to backup their photos securely, providing an alternative to the Google Photo Backup, which as Sherlock stated in 2017, is not desirable to some users. To access subscription features, the user must log in through the sign-in interface, which is accessed by the Options menu in the main gallery. Once an account is created, the user is signed in, which enables some of the user interface options as well as provides the profile button, allowing the user to change their email and password if desired. The alerts that are shown when the change buttons are clicked allow the user to type in the new email or password that they'd like to have changed within the database. Upon clicking the change button, the application authenticates that within the database to change the password or email for the user account. The user is also able to sign out through the profile activity by clicking the options menu and then the sign out option within the menu. From there, we can see that the user is now able to sign in with the new information that they've input in the profile activity. Facebook authentication is also integrated, which allows users that do not wish to have another email and password pair to sign in with existing credentials through Facebook. When the profile activity is accessed by a user who is signed in through Facebook, only the change email button is provided, which does change the way that users are associated for shared folders throughout the application. However, it does not change how they sign in as we are unable to access Facebook authorization data. Users that have accounts but not subscriptions can be added as collaborators on shared folders. However, they are unable to host those shared folders. It does require an account to access the shared folders feature. Syncing and exporting to the SD card are subscribe features which cannot be accessed unless a user does pay for a subscription. However, the menu options are left in to attempt to persuade users through Toast to begin a subscription. Subscriptions are a feature that will be added in a later sprint. However, there is temporary data now enabling these features. Once a subscription is created, photos can be exported to the SD card in organized folders, as well as all photos can be synced, allowing the user to back up their photos to their cloud storage with us or download their photos from backup. The shared folders feature can be accessed by all signed in users However, only users that pay for a subscription can create these folders. By clicking the New button in the Shared Folders activity, the user is able to create a new shared folder. However, these features will be added in a later sprint as all of the data relies on the database. 
So everything that you do see here is temporary data sets as each of the activities will pull the data respectively to prevent unneeded data being pulled to the device and weighing down on the user's data connection. Anyone who is added as a contributor by the owner of a shared folder is able to add photos. However, only the owner is able to remove photos, add contributors, remove contributors, or permanently delete a folder from storage. The delete button is shown for users that are not owners. However, that only removes that user's access from the folder. It does not delete the folder from the database. While you're able to see the UI and the UX from this temporary data, the data pulled from the database for the main shared folders activity would show the most recent would show the most recent photo for the folder. I've removed some of the affordances due to the Google Play services that is required to do anything with Firebase, including Firebase authentication. The Google Map is also not able to function without these Google Play services and there is not a tablet emulator available with Google Play services enabled. I've also removed the temporary data, preventing users from accessing the shared folder area of the application so you can see the tablet unique layouts. For the tablet interface, the grid numbers have been reworked, as well as the sign-in activity and the profile activity, to better show the required information on the larger screen, allowing the user to have a tablet-specific experience. By using Firebase for the continued development of Pictures Everywhere, we are able to see a $1.09 profit minimum per paid user. Unpaid users do not increase the cost as their information is strictly stored within share folders hosted by paid users or on their devices. Therefore, we are able to make a fully profitable experience with both paid and unpaid users, allowing the paid users to generate our profit and retain the unpaid users by not bombarding them with ads, allowing them to give us great word of mouth advertising, and in turn, acquiring more paid users. By completing Pictures Everywhere, we will be able to offer users the features that they've been asking for, such as secure photo backup and unique ways to view their photos, like the map and the calendar, as well as the sharing and effects features that they use on a daily basis in other applications, all within one application. By doing so, we will be breaking the standards of how people view and share photos. This is Heather Baker. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to continuing the development process with Pictures Everywhere. Thank you.